Hey folks, uh, this statistics lesson is going to get us ready for a test. It's a review on chapter 9 uh, on uh, sampling distribution, sampling proportions, and sampling means. Uh, let's go ahead and take care of this board problem first. So consider the following scatter plots, which is true about their correlation. Uh, none are zero. Well, are none zero? Well, I, I, this, is, this looks like the correlation is zero because zero means it's not linear. This one's zero also, so it's not it's not A. It's not B because it says one is zero. These two are definitely zero right here. It's uh, it's not C either. D says uh, two are zero and one, and the other is negative one. Well, this is close to negative one, you guys. If it was negative one, it would be a perfectly straight line. So so it's choice E on that one. Okay. All right, so uh, let's go ahead. Chapter review for, let's see, sampling distributions. Let's go ahead. Inferencing is drawing conclusions about a population based on the result of a well-chosen sample. So we use the sample statistics to estimate about your population parameters. Note that the different samples yields different uh, values in your statistics. Bias and variability are two important concepts related to a given statistics. In order for a statistics to be an unbiased estimator of a population parameter, um, the mean of the sampling distribution must equal the true and usually unknown parameter. So, so if, I, if I got the mean of all my sampling distributions, the mean of my sampling distributions is going to equal the population mean. Okay? Uh, that's what that says. And the variability of statistics is controlled by the sample size. Larger samples get better estimates, so it makes um, um, your variability get smaller when you have larger samples. Okay, so sampling proportions. Sample uh, proportions deal with uh, um, uh, p hat, which is proportions, and this just means my sampling proportion with the p hat right there. Okay, so p hat is an unbiased estimator of your population proportion, which is p. Since uh, this says the mean of my p hats, my sampling proportions, is going to equal my population proportion. Okay, it's a lot of repeat stuff, you guys. So we've seen this a lot over and over and over. It should you guys should be starting to go on? Yeah, yeah, I'm starting to get it now. Okay, just and it's more. We'll do more in, in uh, chapter. It's either 10 or 11 when we get to t distributions. Anyways, uh, sampling variability. This says uh, my standard deviation of my of my proportions, my sampling proportions, that's what this says right here, equals the square root of population p times 1 minus p all over n, square root of all that, provided that 10n, and n is your sample size, is less than your population size, where capital N is your population size. Okay, and the shape of the sampling distribution uh, is approximately normal. If n times p, the sampling size times your proportion, is greater than or equal to 10, and so is n times 1 minus p greater than or equal to 10. Alrighty, sampling means, um, uh, usually uh, uh, the law of large numbers just says uh, averages are less variable uh, with um, more individuals than individual observations. Uh, averages are more normal uh, than individual observations. And uh, the central limit theorem uh, says that, um, um, well, I'll say that in just a second. So the sample means, you guys, has a normal distribution. So when it asks you to describe the distribution of your sample mean, uh, then you say it has uh, it has mean equal to my population mean, and the standard deviation is going to be uh, the population standard deviation divided by the square root of my sample size. So um, the central limit theorem says that we can do uh, hold this part true for any sample as long as in, whether it's normal or non-normal. Okay, typically um, a lot of times it won't be normal, but as long as your sample size is greater than or equal to 30, then my central limit theorem says. Uh, then I could go ahead and use my calculations that we've been dealing with this on, on this. All right, let's try some of these, you guys. So um, the Wechsler Adult Intelligence Scale, the I guess the Waze, uh, is a common IQ uh, test for adults. <clears throat> Excuse me. The distribution of the Waze score uh, for people over 16 years of age is approximately normal. So I would be thinking N with parentheses uh, 100, comma 15. So the uh, mean is 100 and standard deviation is 15. All right, so what's the probability that a randomly chosen individual has a Waze score of 95 or higher? Okay, this is individual. So individual says, I'm just going to use this formula, z equals x minus the mu divided by the standard deviation. Okay, when it's singular, then I just go ahead and use this standard deviation. All right, so I get negative 0.33. I'm going to require that you guys draw that bell-shaped curve and shade the side that we're, what we want. Okay, here's negative 0.33. Whoops, I didn't put it right there. This is negative 0.33 right here. This is zero right here. 
Okay, we want this side over here. The book always gives us to the left, so we got to do 1 minus that. So if you look up negative 0.33 in table A in the front of the book, uh, we get uh, 0 0.3707. So we want this side. So it's roughly almost 63% of the time, uh, if you choose a randomly chosen person, uh, that their score is going to be 95 or higher. All right, so um, this one says, what's the probability that an average uh, way score of 60 people is 95 or higher? This is when everything, the only thing that changes is my standard deviation is this bottom piece right here. Everything else is the same. So it's going to be um, uh, the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So here I get um, uh, 1.933. Um, that's my standard deviation, so now I'm going to put that. That's what goes right here. Okay, still it's going to be 95 minus 100 right here. And then the 1.933 goes on the bottom. Okay, so I get a negative 2.582. All right, so I want to see that uh, graph right here. Here's negative 2.582. We want this side. My book's going to give me this side for negative 2.58. All right, so it's going to be 1 minus that. And then so um, doesn't it make sense that since the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 15, well, it's more likely that I pull a single person out uh, that uh, I, that's going to be 95 or higher, that's below the mean, but the, it's, it's definitely a lot more likely that if I pull out a sample size of 60, um, 60 people or higher, that uh, it's going to be 95 or higher, it's going to be a bigger, or a bigger probability on that, because you're doing more people, you guys, and so uh, chances are that you get bigger groups, of the, um, the more accurate you're going to get on that anyway, so within your mean and your standard deviation. If that makes sense. All right, let's try another one. So suppose uh, that 47% of all adult women think that they do not get enough time for themselves. Uh, an opinion poll interviews 1,025 randomly chosen women and records the sampling proportion who feel that they don't get enough time for themselves. Okay, so describe the sampling uh, distribution of P hat. Uh, and then the truth about that, we'll answer these one of the times. Let's do this first one first, you guys. Let's describe the sampling distribution of t, uh, p hat. Okay, so we're going to say it's approximately normal with mean equal to p, which equals 47%, uh, this guy right here. Okay, and then my standard deviation is I'm going to use my proportion standard deviation. So p times 1 minus p all over n. All right, so there's my standard deviation. Okay, so those are my answers right there. Okay, I want to see those as my answers. So when it says describe the sampling distribution, you tell me what the mean is and what the, uh, the sample standard deviation is. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. All right, and uh, so uh, here's number two. The truth about the population is P equals 0.47. So in what range will the middle 95% of the sample result fall? Okay, do you remember the empirical rule, you guys? 95% means two standard deviations away from the mean. So since um, uh, the standard deviation is 0 0.0156 from number one, then two of them is going to be 0 0.0312 away from the mean. Well, since the mean is 0.47, I'm going to subtract 0 0.0312 from 0.7 and add 0 0.0312 to uh, uh, 0.47. So the middle 95% of that is going to fall within this range from four, almost 44% up to a little bit over 50% right there. Okay. All right. What else do I have for you guys? And then uh, what is the probability? Whoops. I, I gave you the work. What is the probability that the poll gets a sample with um, in, in which fewer than 45% say they do not get enough time for themselves? Okay. So they want to know what the probability that the proportion is less than 45%. Okay, so we just go ahead and plug it in, you guys. 45 minus 47 divide the standard deviation at what we got right there, and you get that. So that's my Z score. I'm going to look up the Z score. Less than means shaded to the left, so that's what the table is. So man, again, I want to see your your uh, I want to see your bell-shaped curve on that. Okay, and then so that's the answer right there because it just said less than. All right, so if you guys want some more information to get yourself prepared, you can go ahead and take a look at uh, that website right there. There's some good stuff right there. And then if you're in my class, uh, I don't know what kind of mood I'm in, but that would be your assignment right there. All righty, take care, you guys.